Alrighty guys, as per usual, I have no idea how to start off these videos. Allow me to start off this video real quick by just saying how sorry I am for the quality of this video. Sorry for the microphone. <laughs> I kind of live in a cement box. This was all before I had any sort of noise dampening on my walls. And I'm so sorry for the picture quality. Turns out key lighting, you know, right here, like I have it my setup. Very important for a professional level video. Anyway, I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me and please enjoy this video that I absolutely loved making. I'm going to be diving into a little bit of nostalgia today. Being nostalgic is one of my favorite things because I love revisiting things that made me happy when I was a kid. And I feel like today, in today's day and age, nostalgia is very important. Doing things that make yourself and other people happy is just one of the best things that we can do for ourselves and others. So welcome back guys for more good vibes. Ooh, I'm finally feeling the energy getting into this video. Sometimes I'm telling you, within like the first 30 seconds, it's super Ako Taco. Well, I guess I should start off with the fact that I will be opening this and this. I know what both of these things are, but as of right now, you don't. And it has something to do with these physical discs right here, if you can see it. Can you see those? Yeah, it has it has to do with those. So what happened was I was having a bad day one day and I've learned about myself that something I love to do when I'm just, mm, when I'm having a day is to clean, build things and or reorganize. And you know what's funny is those three things I hated as a child, but turns out as you age, you tend to change. And sometimes that can be a really beautiful thing. So in the midst of rearranging my room and just building things, you know, building furniture as I'm kind of setting up my own space, I randomly tweeted out that day that I decided to go through all of my old PlayStation 2 games up here. But I also mentioned that I have no way to play them. And I was kind of in a predicament where I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep all of these old physical game discs or potentially donate them or just get rid of them. I'm kind of trying to purge things that I don't really need just so things stop taking up so much space and everything just doesn't feel so cluttered all the time. If you guys are anything like me and you really like to keep things that are sentimental to you, getting rid of something like this, stuff that you've played throughout your entire childhood that is quite literally your entire childhood. Getting rid of something like that can feel really not good. One of you beautiful humans out there by the name of Pete decided to send me this and this. And the burning question within you right now, I know is, what are these two things? And that is what I am here to answer today. Weapons at the ready, I'm gonna do this so that you can't watch so that I do not embarrass myself. Also, these things come apart. Like these are kitchen shears, but they also like <laughs> turn into something else. I don't know. I'm scary though <laughs> with these. So we have a, what I'm assuming is a power brick. Yes. AC adapter. That's what that means. Power. We have another cord. <laughs> this might give it away. <laughs> if you haven't guessed it already, remember these babies? Talk about nostalgia. If this doesn't give you nostalgia, I don't know what does. I don't even know if TVs are made anymore with these, what do you call them? AV jacks? The, that's the first thing that came to my brain cells, but I could be wrong. Hold on, I need, I need to look this up. Where's my phone? You know what's hard is when you go to Google something like this and you don't, like you don't know the name, but you also don't really know how to describe it. Red, yellow, and white cables. Hey! I was kind of right. I got a couple hits here. RCA to HDMI. No, well, these are adapters, but what are they called? They're often color-coded, yellow for composite video, red for the right audio channel, and white or black for the left channel or stereo audio. I was today years old when I learned what each individual jack meant. When I was a kid, I didn't care. It, it was all magic to me. Like, no one cared. So they're called RCA connectors, but I distinctly remember something about them being called AV. And then there's also another converter that literally calls it a AV to HDMI converter. So RCA AV cords. Isn't that alone super nostalgic? It's just these little cords. I remember having to constantly plug it into this giant box 
TV that we had in our living room for like 12,000 years. I don't even think they make TVs like that anymore. And then there's a part of me that wishes I still had one just to have one. You're not ready for this. You probably are. <laughs> you can't probably see it through the plastic. So let me get it out for you. Am I the only one though? Like does anyone else when they get like really down and out about things or feeling a little bit down this week. Maybe you don't do this, but you really should. Like I highly, highly, highly recommend taking a trip down memory lane, doing things that are extremely nostalgic for you. Speaking of nostalgia though, the amount of nostalgia I've had this week from some gaming, recent gaming announcements for example, the old Tomb Raider games from PlayStation 1 are getting remastered. I am so stinking excited about these games getting remastered because, well, mostly the second Tomb Raider game. I don't really have too much memory of the first or the third. I don't even know if I've seen either of those two played too much, except for like playthroughs on YouTube. The second Tomb Raider game has such a hold on my soul, like I don't know how to explain it. When I think of where my gaming roots, you know, where they took hold, where it was planted, that game is one of the first games that stick out to me. Fun fact though, is that I've never actually played it myself because at that time I was really too young to even understand how a controller worked, which speaking of controller, this is what was in it. <laughs> an old PlayStation 2 controller with the wire, of course. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty old school. I love wired stuff. Yeah, it sucks for cord management. No one likes that, but I don't even know. There's just something about it that I just love things that are wired. And I think it's because I'm frankly too lazy to remember to charge anything. So by the time I go to use whatever it is, it's now Bluetooth nowadays. I feel like a feel like a boomer. Whenever I use things that are wireless, I'm always constantly reminded that I didn't charge it. I, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, we were talking about the Tomb Raider games. So yeah, they're remaking all three of them and I'm so excited, but I'm so happy that these are getting remastered because that's something that I know that I can pick up and I know I'm going to enjoy it because I literally enjoyed it so much growing up, even it, just watching it be played. I was literally just watching an entire walkthrough of Tomb Raider 2 the other day. I do that just so I can listen to the voice effects, the sound effects, the shooting, even though when you watch it now, so if you're not privy to that game, if you don't know what it is, when you listen to the shooting, you might be like, oh my God, it's so annoying. But like that, that sound, oh my gosh, it just gets me going. The boat ramping up from the Venice level, the old dudes that sound like they're taking a crap every single time they want to shoot at you. Oh my gosh, speaking of taking a crap. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the butler from the second game. I think that was more of a like training session that you could do in that game. And then the butler would just follow you around Lara's mansion the whole time and he would just be shaking his little tray of drinks and then every once in a while he'd like moan and then like fart. I feel like maybe it wasn't a fart, but as a kid I heard that and I was like, he farted, that's funny. <laughs> And you could lock him in the freezer too. Good times. So I'm glad those are getting remastered because that is something that I know will bring me joy because it's always brought me joy. As much as I love like recent games too, I just feel like a lot of them have been so much of the same. And it feels like a lot of times too, like when you buy a new $70 game, I feel like it's a lot more of a gamble now. And then so many of them come out every year. It's not like, two, one or two great games come out in a year and you know, you spend 70 bucks and if it's not great, whatever, it's, you know, it's the only one. But if you wanna take a chance and buy all these new games that come out every single flipping year, that's a significant investment. So I'm happy to like buy something that I've owned in the past, but knowing that it's going to re be remastered and hopefully keep the essence of the old game. But I have a PlayStation 2 Slim. Once again, sent to me by Pete. Thank you so much. You didn't have to do this. I did not deserve this, but I, I appreciate and am super grateful for the gesture. Ah, look at it. It's renewed and you know, there's some scuff marks and like discoloration on here, but honestly, that's kind of, one of the best parts about it because I know it was used. I know it was loved by someone. It's nice that I 
got my hands on it again and hopefully it'll get a lot of use. You send me this stuff, I already have a massive backlog of games that I want to get to, and now you're giving me the opportunity to play all of my old favorite games all over again? evil. Anyway, this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it super well in the light. You got the memory card slots. Are memory cards not super nostalgic? <laughs> you pop it and it doesn't work, so you have to pop it back out a bunch of times. I don't know if you did that. I totally did that though. Oh, I think I was pointing at the wrong thing when I was talking about the memory card. It literally says well, memory card right here. So that's it. These are for the controllers. <laughs> I know my stuff, clearly. Onto this thing, um, as you can probably tell, it's the size and shape of a game disc, and it is, I know what it is, but I can't wait to show you guys, because this is one of my favorite games ever. It was revolutionary for me, and I also think the gaming industry, specifically superhero games. Okay, I'm gonna stop there, okay? We're just gonna have to let you wait and see. My legs are falling asleep. <sighs> Look. <laughs> Has anyone else played this? This is Spider-Man 2. Oh, here it is. Okay. <laughs> so I was sent Spider-Man 2, but I also still have my copy of Spider-Man 1. I loved both games. This one was my absolute favorite. I probably have the most hours spent in this. I found this out when I was moving here, but when I was going through all of my old game discs, and I was packing everything up, I, I was going through everything and like trying to remember exactly what I've owned and I found that I did not still have my original copy of Spider-Man 2. I was so devastated. I mean, I was really happy to still have this one because this is also an insanely fun part of my childhood, but this one was just, it was so revolutionary for me and I loved the web swinging. It was one of the best parts about the game. And I, and like I said before, with this being, with this game being revolutionary for the gaming industry, I'm pretty sure the web swinging in this was like game changing for the Spider-Man genre. It like set the bar and set the stage for, I think most of the games that we have today. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I watched a video on the creator because some of you guys sent it to me so i watched it obviously but it was on the creator who made this game he played one of the more recent spider-man games from playstation i think playstation 4 playstation 5 um the 2018 game and in that video i'm gonna see if i can try to find it and then i'll link it down below in the description but i think they mentioned in that video that this game did so much good for the Spider-Man games going forward. One of my favorite missions is the Mysterio mission where you you fight him in like this massive Broadway theater, which being a Broadway fan myself, I just, I love that mission. And then he becomes the Statue of Liberty and then you have to just do this really epic and also kind of difficult at the time. At least I found it really difficult. You gotta swing around him and like shoot these balls of lights on him and then you can go in and like smack him in his fishbowl face and it's awesome. I'm so grateful to have another copy of this. It definitely makes me feel better about misplacing and or potentially losing my other one. And I think there's gonna be more than enough room here to put these two side by side together up here on my shelf. But since I still have you guys here and I'm still feeling the whole nostalgia thing today. I want to keep going through and just go through all these games that I have and I want to see which ones you guys recognize and if you guys have any fond memories of these as I'm going, please write them down below in the comments. I cannot wait, 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 what? I cannot wait to read what you guys have to say and kind of live through you guys again and all of your favorite memories that you had playing these games. Also, I'm just gonna let you guys know right now that some of these games are actually not mine. They're either friends that I borrowed their games and just like maybe never gave them back. Some of them are also my brother, so I just like didn't play them because had no real interest, but also couldn't find it within me to get rid of them because I know that they're his favorite games. Ooh, we're starting off with a heavy hitter already. Incredibles is incredible. This was one of my favorite movies growing up as a kid. And I I don't remember like when the game came out, but I think what I remember about, about a lot of these movie to game things, like a lot of the games came out pretty much within the year 
or two after the movies released. So I don't remember exactly when this game came out, but all I know is that I have played it a disgusting amount of times and it took me an even longer time to finally beat this game for the first time ever. I remember doing that. I remember getting so frustrated as a kid because I don't know what those things are called, like those giant robot balls with the tentacle legs. I know you fight a couple of them in the game and they were so hard. Were things really as hard as they seemed or was it just because you were a kid? I also have that same existential question when it comes to just nostalgia and games specifically in the gaming industry as well since we're like, you know, this is a gaming channel and I like to talk about games a lot. And I've been thinking a lot about this more recently. I find myself quite often thinking about like the good old days in gaming, all the PlayStation 1 games, all the PlayStation 2 games, like Xbox 360. Also a disclaimer, I really have more experience with PlayStation and Xbox games. I had a couple Nintendo stations growing up, like the Game Boy Advance, like the DS, but I never owned like a Super Nintendo, the SNES. <laughs> Whether or not you think that makes me a real gamer or not, I don't know. But I, all I know is that I played what I played and I loved it and that's it. But back to my question, were games really better back then or is it because you were a kid? and everything seems to be a little bit more magical and surreal when you're a child. Is it a byproduct of growing up? Cause like, if you look at all the games being released today, like they're objectively gorgeous. Like the graphics have only gotten better and continue to get better. But why did it feel like the vibe of gaming was so much different when you were younger? It's not that I don't enjoy games or they're not good nowadays, but it's as if they're different. Every year, there's at least 10 games that could qualify as being really good, probably worth your time, but there's just so many, I, I feel like I can't keep up anymore. And they all tend to be kind of the same thing too. Like a lot of them nowadays are really open world, action adventure, and maybe I'm just talking more about the AAA gaming space. Maybe that means I need to play more indie games. And I know the answer to that question. And it's, and it's yes, Yes, I definitely do need to play more indie games. But I don't know, it just felt like as a kid when I was growing up playing all these old games where nowadays if you played them, maybe they won't actually be as good as you remember. But all I'm left with is like the feelings that I had playing them and the feelings is what's unrivaled, I guess. And there have definitely been some more recent games that do make me feel like that again, but I guess I'm always chasing that feeling feeling. I definitely got that sense of childlike joy and wonder when I was playing games recently like the Uncharted games for the first time but what's cool about that is the first Uncharted game is older and playing it, when did I play it? I think I played it in 2022. So for 2022 standards that's probably considered a retro game but when I was playing it I couldn't believe how well it held up and that's where I found myself thinking playing that game like why don't we make games like this anymore? Yeah, you just look at games nowadays and everything's so complex with like maps and skills and abilities where sometimes I'm like, dude, just give me a good story, drop me in a world that will completely immerse me for a couple hours, not hundreds plus hours. Every once in a while, I do love a good 500 hour plus game adventure, but not all the time because like, <sighs> Even though you could say that like gaming is kind of my job right now, you do need a break sometimes. Anyway, there's like my little game rant for the video. <laughs> we only got through one of my older games. Great, and I have like 50 at least. Ooh, I have Jack 3, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys right now, I've never actually played it myself. I've watched people play it, but I think I own all three of them. And once again, I'm not getting rid of them because they're still someone's favorite game. I still remember watching them be played. So I'm never getting rid of these. All right, I'm just gonna start grabbing handfuls at a time. Sims 2 Pets, this stuff was my jam. The Sims provided me with such an escape and such a level of immersion. And I loved the idea of like second life simulator games. But yeah, I don't really know what else to say about this except for I paid $18 for this used in what year? Maybe my mom bought it for me because as a kid, I don't think I would have spent 20 bucks 
on that, did I even have a sense of like how expensive things were back then? I don't really remember. Anyway, great memories with that. This game right here that I'm about to show you. This is again, so important to me. ATV, Off-Road Fury. I would spend hours, days at a time playing this game with my dad and my brother, cause I'm pretty sure you could actually split the screen four ways or I guess three ways in our case, cause it's three people. But I would spend hours playing every single track. I knew every single one of them, like the back of my hand. And then there was like a free roam mode that we could play where you could just ride around and just like have fun in all these different biomes, which was so cool at the time. But I distinctly remember playing in like free roam mode and it'd be like me, my dad, my brother, and we would always try to outdo each other with like high and how far you could get your jumps. And we would just constantly have these competitions to, like to see who could go the farthest or go the highest. And it was just a ton of fun. And the funny thing is that I don't, and to this day, I still say this, I don't generally like racing games. Maybe I just didn't really care about that as a kid, but there were definitely some racing games that I played as a child that I was obsessed with, I was addicted to, and ooh, that just opened up on me. There's the disc. <laughs> Glad to know the disc is still in here. Don't know why I didn't check all this before. That's gonna be a project for another day though, just going through all these and making sure that all the discs are actually accounted for. Next one up is The Sims. I'm pretty sure, yeah, this isn't like two or three. This is the original Sims. And once again, so many hours playing these games, like can't even count. Speaking of racing games, this is another incredible one. I've played so many times for all the same reasons that I played ATV Off-Road Fury. I knew all of the tracks and the courses like the back of my hand. I had certain cars that I would just play all the time that I would I would only use. I would play certain tracks just to embed myself in the world and look at all the scenery and yeah, this is another game where my dad, myself, and my brother would play for hours against each other, being competitive. This is making me wanna go back in time. Guitar Hero 3, one of the greatest of all time. I don't even think this needs an explanation, but this game introduced me to so many songs that I don't think I would have found on my own. It's probably the main reason I even like rock music in general. I love I love rock music and I love a lot of metal as well. Like this game introduced me to bands like Disturbed. Had no idea who they were before. Ooh, let me see what ones in here I can even recognize. Maybe I can find one of their songs. But you had Welcome to the Jungle, Sunshine of Your Love, Rocky Like a Hurricane, Mississippi Queen, Cult of Personality, Paint It Black, and Raining Freaking Blood. Oh, I remember spending so much time trying to beat that song, even on like medium, easy and medium. That song was so hard for me as a kid, but I eventually got it. I don't know if I ever did it on expert though. Anyway, so many good times, so many great memories playing these games. We got another Jack. This one is Jack 2. Once again, didn't actually play this myself. Episode three, Revenge of the Sith. This was, this was my jam. If you can't tell by my channel name though, kind of love Star Wars. It's one of my favorite things. I don't know if you can see them, but I got like a collection of Star Wars Funko Pops right here. I just, they're like Pokemon at this point. I just need to collect them all. Please tell me that someone else out there knows what this game is and has played it as much as I have. This is Pac-Man World 2. Oh my gosh. This is one of those games where I'm not actually confident if it was like as big as I thought it was, or as like as popular as I thought it was. I've played this game so many times. This is so nostalgic for me. I remember the level where you're jumping through like the treetops and stuff. And even though I was awful at this game, like I don't think I was actually good. I don't know if I ever beat it, but I would play it so often just to play certain levels and get to like a certain part until I just knew I would get to a point where I just couldn't get past it. So yeah, I don't know if I ever beat it, but I do know the first several levels very, 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 very well. Mostly because that's all I could play because that's all I could get to. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I don't actually know if this one's like considered one of the best Harry Potter games ever. I don't actually know. I can't piece them apart in my head enough to remember exactly which ones were like good objectively and which ones were not as good objectively. The only ones I can think of the most are, well, I think it was the second one. The Chamber of Secrets from PlayStation 1, actually. I might still have that disc. Please tell, oh, I do have it. I can't believe I have it. 
I need to go like play the lottery or something. I, I cannot believe that I still own this. The Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. As you can see, it's just the disc. Like, I don't even have the original disc case for it. I don't actually think this is my copy. I think this is an example of a game that I borrowed from someone and might have forgotten to give it back. So yeah, I remember playing this one so many times. I remember the death day party level with Peeves. I remember the very beginning of the game having to run around the maze in the burrow. And I remember collecting all the jelly beans and there being like a dancing washer and dryer at the one part. And I remember there was also something else where you had to take gnomes. You had to like turn and spin and fling them and try to hit certain things. I have so many great memories of this game as a child. Okay, this is another game that I never played myself, but I know my brother played this a ton. Call of Duty 2, Big Red 1. Yeah, never played this, but once again, I'm keeping it because why not? Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This, this is a classic game. Tony Hawk's Proving Grounds. Um. This might sound really weird, but like I never actually knew how to play these games. Like if there was like a campaign or a story mode, never really did those. The only thing I ever did playing these games was sit in the half pipe mode and then just skate back and forth trying to do all these crazy tricks. That's all I did and I loved it. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. And I think this might be one that I remember a little bit more distinctly or or it could be the Goblet of Fire. It actually might be the Goblet of Fire game because there's one game that sticks out in my head the most and I remember the start and it's basically, you're running around the castle, I think, and everything's on fire. But that also could be a hybrid of both Order of the Phoenix and the Goblet of Fire game because I think the Goblet of Fire starts off in the woods and everything's on fire, but I also believe that the Order of the Phoenix starts off with you being at the castle and running around the castle. So I might be getting those two mixed up. Either way, it sounds to me like both of those games are very special to me. <gasps> oh, Thrillville, my dudes. Oh my God, this game was so uh, much fun. I think this started off my love for some management games, not all of them. I don't love all management games, but I don't love all of most genres. Like, there's definitely certain games and certain genres that I will play and I'll love, even if I don't love the genre as a whole. But I love management games and I love, oh, I just love seeing progression. I love building things and kind of seeing the fruits of your labor come together and seeing this massive profit accrue. And this game was so meaningful to me because not only was there just an epic like story mode thing where you could play as a manager of the amusement park and you could build things and unlock things as you go. And like the more things you built and the more money you made, the more you could unlock. And then you could actually unlock different themed sections of the park. Oh, it's, it was this whole thing. This is another game that I would love to see them remaster and like not change anything, but the graphics, maybe fine tune some of the mechanics but I really think as a whole, this game was just perfection, at least for me. Keep in mind, there's no such thing as a perfect game, but for me as a kid, this game was perfection. But aside from the story campaign, there was this awesome party mode that once again, my brother and my dad, there's a theme here, they're both very much responsible for my gaming addiction. But we would play the story mode for hours. We would just build this entire lineup of games that you could play like back to back to back. There were games like Luftwaffe. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it had something to do with planes. There were so many mini game types, but that's the only one that sticks out to me in my head right now. I, I cannot describe to you how much fun we had. And it's so funny because all we would do is play the same games over and over and over and over again. Oh, this game so special to me. And <laughs> like looking at, looking at the back, I just remember like going and talking to all the NPCs in the park and they would just give you these like really cheesy compliments like your park rocks. <laughs> just it was so feel good. Okay, here's another one. Here's another one that I'm probably going to gush about for another oh sh hour. <laughs> Madagascar. Madagascar. <sighs> Not only was it one of my favorite movies as a kid, but it is also one of my favorite video games. Besides The Incredibles, this is probably the best movie to video game adaptation, period. You start off as playing the zebra, you got to escape the zoo, it's a good time, and then you get to the island of Madagascar, and once again, 
I was obsessed with all of these different levels and the variety of levels that they had and things that you could do from like, oh my gosh, there's one here where you're playing as the lion and you're running through the streets of New York and you're trying to dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge five Ds, a dodgeball all the way through to, I wanna say Grand Central Station so that you can find Marty the zebra. It's actually disgusting that I remember this so well right now because normally my memory is absolute shite. Then you had all these different levels where you had to go like find things, it's the hippo and you had to, I don't, I don't protect like some, the, oh, the little lemurs, you had to protect the little lemurs from the fusa. I remember a level where you had to do that. There's so many incredible levels. There was also one where you could play as all the penguins and you had to like commandeer a massive cargo ship and like sneak your way through that. And even back then I was awful at stealth. So at least I come by it honestly. So many fantastic memories playing this game. And actually this was in fact a game that I did try to play again a couple years ago. Yeah, that, that was a... Uh not knocking this game at all it's still fantastic and i stand by that but yeah some games are just meant to be left in the in the past and they're they're definitely not as as good mechanically as you remember and this is one of those cases pun intended because video game case ha 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 we're gonna throw that joke in the trash lego freaking star wars the video game and yes i have hundreds maybe thousands of hours playing this game with my brother i remember i used to taunt him a ton because it was one of those like couch co-op games where you play with two people and you share i think the same screen i don't even think there was split screen for this so you would share the same screen and like your character could only go so far without the other person coming along with you so i remember torturing the crap out of my brother and like if he ever pissed me off for any reason or took something that i wanted i would just stand still and he could never progress because i just wouldn't move it was great yeah i was evil as a kid what of it this is something that i would revisit again even just this version but i know that there's a new lego star wars i want to say skywalker saga that came out a couple years ago and Maybe I should just play that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Fun fact, actually, this movie scared the crap out of me as a kid. It was the werewolves. I physically for years could not be in the same room as someone else watching this movie during, spoiler alert, let me give you five seconds to either pause this video or exit on out of here. But I could not watch or even be in the same room as anyone watching the scene where Professor Lupin turns into a werewolf. It was horrifying. The original Jack and Daxter once again, not mine, didn't play it myself, watched it be played, but I'm keeping it. Star Wars Battlefront, the original, not two. Of course I have that one too. You think I wouldn't have the second Battlefront. And this was before they added like the special heroes and villains and this was still so much fun. Yup, once again, spent hundreds of hours torturing my dad. <laughs> On the other team and I would just I would just find him and just take him out all the time I would just solo just go for him still got the game disc and everything but the side is chipped No, I don't actually mind like chips and stuff. It means it was used and it was loved and Definitely definitely this was loved guitar hero 1 and 2 dual pack baby star wars battlefront 2 this game was so good. I, I would play this with my dad and my brother all the time, split screening it, and <laughs> I have so many fond memories of my brother like being on my team, whether it be on accident or whatever, but the second I got the opportunity to play as like the hero or the villain for that team, if he was on my team, I would hoard the villain or the hero and i would not touch it i wouldn't use it because i think in that game if one person got access to the hero or the villain they could just sit on it and the other person wouldn't get access to it at all i know i'm awful what's my favorite map thank you so much for asking actually there's a couple i loved felucia felicia but i don't actually know how that uh planet is pronounced but i remember loving it so much because you had access to the one character by the name of, oh, what is her name? That's another one that I can't pronounce. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, because trust me, I know you guys will. I think 
the hero that you could play as. I'll spell it out below. Anyway, her name was Ayla Sakura, I believe. But yeah, I just, I loved her entire look. I'm pretty sure she ran around with two lightsabers and for a kid at that time, I thought that was awesome. I also distinctly remember loving Jabba's palace, but I love being able to see, oh, those pig-like creatures. Once again, what's their names? It starts with a G, I know that. Gamorian, that's what they're called. I love being able to see the Gamorreans just kind of running around. There was so much about that game that really made the Star Wars universe come to life. There was also the planet or the map of Geonosis. You would play alongside those little bug-like flying creatures. Once again, can't remember their names. I'm not good with names, okay? Coming in with another Star Wars game, Star Wars The Force Unleashed. This game, gold. I, mm, I think I remember playing the second one, but I don't remember getting into it as much as the first one. The first one was just so good. That was one of the first real story games that I remember that, that distinctly sticks out in my head that I remember loving so much and really getting into the story and really getting a feel for the main character. And I loved the fact that this was one of the first games I think that I ever played where the main character was not objectively like a good guy, a good character. So he starts off as being an apprentice of I think Darth Vader and then throughout the game you see him kind of come to terms with everything that he's learned throughout the story and kind of pledge his allegiance to the other side, I think. 007 Agent Under Fire, y'all. This was the shit even though I was awful at it horrible 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 but man did i enjoy the heck out of it i don't think i ever finished it but i distinctly remember loving several several of the levels but i think it was always the car stuff that got me i'm not good at cars generally vehicles and games couldn't care less but i think that's always what helped me back in this game was any time i had to deal with driving a car it was just it was just a no for me. Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy. Yeah, they're all good. I don't actually remember which one is which. Like I can't think about it in my head and piece apart which levels were what and what exactly you found in what game. It basically, it was all the same game for me. It was all fun. The Incredibles, Rise of the Underminer. I do remember playing this quite a bit. I didn't love it as much as the original Incredibles, but I did love playing as Frozone. I do remember distinctly playing as Frozone. And that was something in this game that was very different from the first game that I loved. And that is probably the main reason I actually played it all the way through. I think I finished it, yeah. Ooh, I don't wanna say I'm saving the best for last because <laughs> I don't know if a lot of people would say that this is a really great game, but I thought it was a great game, but I also thought it was so hard. Bounty Hunter is another game that I have actually played and finished multiple times. I've watched people play it. I love watching playthroughs on YouTube of it. I definitely go through periods in my life where if I'm getting really nostalgic and I want to play all these old games, but I don't want to play them myself because... I either can't because I don't have the station or maybe I don't have the game anymore or maybe I'm just downright lazy. I always throw up non-commentary full walkthroughs of games. I do it all the time with Tomb Raider 2. I was just doing it the other night. I'll do it with Star Wars Bounty Hunter, but I'll pretty much do it with any game that I just have a craving to kind of experience or re-experience again. Because I find that simply listening to the game, you know, sounds or music or what have you, that alone is enough to bring me back and kind of put me in that feeling of being a child again and just feeling really happy and cozy. I would say cozy is actually the perfect word for it. Like nostalgia for me is such a cozy feeling. I actually think that is all of my PlayStation 2 games, but I still got my PlayStation 1 games if you guys wanna go through that. <laughs> Say no more, got you. I will have you know though that there is significantly less in this pile, so that should be good <laughs> for time's sake at least. So we already talked about Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, absolutely love that game. This is probably the greatest game of all time. Like period, bar none, no contest, objectively one of the best games ever. It was just, it was so good for its time. I had all of the lines, all of the dialogue memorized to a T. I don't think I still have them memorized as well now, but when I hear them, if I hear them again, because again, this is another playthrough that I'll watch a non-commentary video on YouTube of, and I find myself when I'm watching them, like thinking about all the lines, like I know I can almost, 
remember what the lines are about to say simply by listening to the inflection or the way that the actor said it. It's just, this game is magic for me. I was just talking about this earlier, but they're remaking or remastering rather, sorry. They are remastering the old Tomb Raider trilogy one, two, and three. I have the most memories watching this one be played because like I've said probably so many times, I was too young to know how to play this. I do remember it being very difficult. This game did not hold your hand, but this game still lives in my head rent free. This is like a yearly rewatch for me, non-commentary, full playthroughs. I honestly have no idea if anyone else but me knows this game, but Loaded was another one. And actually fun fact, I was not allowed to play this for the longest time because my parents thought it was too gory. I mean, we all know how the games are nowadays. Like gore is the least of our problems. <laughs> it was so immersive being in the prison, playing as your murderous psychotic character, which I actually don't even know the lore behind this game because all I would do is just jump in and just start shooting stuff. You could play as Fwank, Butch, Vox, Mama, Bouncer, and Captain Hands. <laughs> I think I played as Vox the most because like I wanted to be a female in games and you know, I thought she was super badass and super sexy like, mm, hey girl. But yeah, does anyone know if you played this game, was it a popular game? I just never know thinking back, like I can never tell if a game was actually as popular as I thought it was or if it was like indie. I don't really know what indie would have meant back then. Everything feels so distorted when you're a child. Like looking back, I'm like, I don't actually know what was true. All I know is that this game was fun as hell. Driver 2, and I know I said I didn't like games with vehicles, but I still loved it. Like I was not good at it again. I don't think I ever finished the game, but I used to just spend so many, ow. Oh, Oh, that's not, that's not seated. There's multiple discs in here. Disc one and disc two. I don't remember why there would need to be more than one disc. Maybe this was a special edition. I don't actually know, but I would play so many hours just in the free roam mode, just, just driving around and practicing my driving skills before I got my license. Here's another game that I have no idea if multiple people actually knew about this or not, but ball breakers, like, this was a party co-op, like couch co-op game. All I remember was just playing it a ton and loving it. You would just beat the crap out of, you know, your opponents. I think you had to beat them up and then they would die and then their balls would just be left behind. That sounded really wrong. It sounded better in my head. I don't know how else to explain it though. It was almost like a combination of racing and boxing, wrestling. Like I remember being in a ring of sorts and just having to beat the crap out of like, my dad or my brother, characters, they're virtual characters. Wait, so on the back it says, sentenced to eternity in an ultra-violent intergalactic prison for a crime you didn't commit, you only have one shot at freedom and it's a long, hard roll road to roll down. You will have to go head to head with the best of the worst. What does that mean? The most vicious and violent humanoid prisoners the galaxy has to offer. Fight your way across the universe, beating any and all opponents. If you're tough enough, you can win back the freedom that is rightfully yours if you're the last man rolling. Okay, so it doesn't seem like it had a story mode. It just sounds like it was just a party game full of competition. And that's exactly what I remember it being when I used to play this. But I do remember having so much fun with this. I have to know, is there anyone else out there that knows what this game is? All right, guys, I think that's really it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this very nostalgic video. I hope it brought a lot of nostalgia to you. I love going back and revisiting old games that were really special to me because oftentimes with like the gaming industry nowadays, just feeling like it's constantly pumping out games all the time. Sometimes I just, I just like to go down and revisit all these games and even just look at the cases and look at the back and read, you know, the synopsis of what the game was about. Doing that just makes me remember like why I fell in love with gaming in the first place, why it was one of my favorite hobbies that ended up turning into a passion, into a YouTube channel and in some ways even into a job and that's sometimes still really crazy to think about. And real quick, once again, before I forget, I just wanna say thank you so much to Pete for sending me a renewed version of the PlayStation 2. I cannot wait to set this up and, and try it out and play through some of my old games. And thank you again for sending me one of my favorite games of all time, Spider-Man 2. I'm so glad I finally have a copy of this again. I was 
devastated when I could not find my original one. And now I have to put all that back up here. Yay. Ooh, I'm like exhausted from all that talking right now. Man, getting excited is a lot of work. Sup, so, so my battery just died. Turns out my camera is also extremely tired. So I'm just gonna end this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this brought you a lot of good vibes. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you guys take care of yourself and do something today that makes you really happy. I think I'm gonna go clean up everything, maybe play some games, chat with some friends online, and I will see you guys in the next video.